My name is Jonas Sonnenschein. I'm uh, an environmental economist. Uh, I have done research in uh, climate and energy policy, evaluated several of these policies. Um, and now I have moved to, to Slovenia, where I again work with policy issues, but also with um, sustainable lifestyle choices uh, and more specifically with uh, aviation. I think uh, the 1.5 degree target in particular uh, is almost impossible to reach because we would rely on technology that is science fiction. So it, it would require us to suck CO2 from the atmosphere in quantities that, that are as big as uh, large parts of our whole world's ecosystem. That doesn't mean we shouldn't do everything and try to get there. So it is an accumulative problem, climate change. So even if we can reduce the temperature increase until the end of the century from, say, 2.5 to 2 degrees, that's great and it's very important. So when I say it's not very realistic, it doesn't mean we shouldn't try everything to get there. Of course, on a global level, we have not managed to, to reduce emissions so far. They just fell when there was a major economic crisis. But at the sectoral level, we can s clearly see success. So there are countries with uh, uh, cars that are much smaller, much more efficient, because they have higher car taxes when you buy them. I think, nevertheless, that uh, the policy interventions we have so far are not going, going far enough. So very often CO2 taxes are mainly an instrument to collect tax revenue for the budget instead of uh, really steering behavior. So uh, a long-term plan to raise these taxes stepwise is a good signal to industry to invest into the technologies that are needed to decarbonize also the industry sector. I think in the fight against climate change there are some low-hanging fruits and then that's where many policy efforts are now. It's the electricity system for sure. Transport is a very tricky one because it's not a point source. So Tish is one big power plant. It contributes uh, more than a quarter of all the Slovenian emissions. So, so that's a quite easy target to tackle. While transport, there's so much transit transport. There are uh, hundreds and thousands of cars in Slovenia. So to, to transform this system is much more complex. And I think that's also one explanation why way too little is done in, in that sector. I think air transport is, is one of the big challenges. Uh, so far on a global level, just around 5% of global greenhouse gas emissions come from the aviation sector, but this uh, percentage is, is increasing. Uh, the sector is growing at uh, enormous rates. Um, and on the other hand, there is no real technical substitute. So we cannot have planes with batteries, or at least no long distance planes, because they're way too heavy. Here, we need policy to actually manage the, the growth of the sector. So this is really about degrowth, or however you want to call it, but, but manage the, the, the very quick growth in a way that it slows down and eventually falls. Policy is actually working the opposite way by, by subsidizing and supporting the sector instead of making it more expensive and, and also developing the alternatives, uh, as we talked about before, the, the railway system. I think historically this, this change of societal norms has happened very slowly. So in that sense, uh, I'm not too optimistic. On the other hand, they have to happen if we want to have a chance to limit uh, climate change and other ecological crises. So um, I think there's no point in, in giving up. But uh, as we said before, we cannot leave the responsibility to the consumer. But if there's policies in place and the market moves, then there is basically no, no, no choice. I think this is also one key finding from my behavioral economics research into climate change policy, that um, if people have too many choices, as a society as a whole, we tend to make bad choices. So I think one task for policymakers is to restrict choices in a way. Yeah.